Hello. Today, Rebecca Egdorf, Christine Congdon, Mikhail Debro, Camille Donawa, and myself, Dave Evelyn, present an organizational analysis based on the film Hidden Figures. The film depicts the remarkable lives of Katherine Johnson, Dorothy Vaughn, and Mary Jackson, each a highly accomplished mathematician and all remarkable black women who played critical roles in the U.S. space race of the 1960s. Thank you, David, for the introduction. In the film Hidden Figures, NASA is the main organization. The structure falls under the category of a hierarchy organization. De Bruyne, 2009, outlines the concept of the quote-unquote pyramid structure, where the majority of power is focused at the top and delegates tasks to the subordinates under each level. The next slide shows a breakdown of how NASA operates as an organizational system. This diagram represents the hierarchy system within NASA, specifically focused on the Langley Research Center in Hampton, Virginia. In the film, the organization is presented as two main units, the Space Task Group in the main building, which is mainly white males, and the West Area Computing Unit, which is the all-black women's building. Although there are social and cultural events taking place, the film presents the organization with NASA as looking past those social dilemmas in order to complete the organization's goal to send a man into space. Since the organization places most of the power at the top and delegates tasks to each character below them, this places the organization in the pyramid category. Looking at the system within Langley, Al Harrison is the top supervisor. He gives instructions to the engineers and computers which have little power to object to tasks they're given. Throughout the film, Ka Catherine is given several jobs that are time consuming only to be told to throw them away. She also encounters obstacles with the lead engineer, Paul. Although they work in the same unit, Paul is a senior employee to her and therefore she is unable to object to his instructions. As the film progresses and relationships are formed, Catherine eventually speaks up, causing a shift in the initial structure of the system. Additionally, Dorothy is experiencing similar difficulties in the West Area unit. She is not employed as a supervisor and has little authority to make suggestions. However, she eventually makes enough of an impression on her supervisor to be offered a promotion and elevate her position as well as her quote unquote girls. This ties into the identity of NASA in this film. On the following slide, David will discuss the identity of NASA as an organization. Thank you, Rebecca. In coming to terms with any brand or the identity of an organization, we must pay attention to the hard and soft data, observable behaviors, policies, actions, and cultures. It further requires analysis of an organization's vision, identity, and personality. What is NASA like? Who does NASA say that it is? And how is it perceived by the systems within which it exists? NASA is focused on cutting-edge science of the time, innovation, and putting the United States into space. Writing echoes of the Second World War, NASA is a single armature in the larger system of the United States, meant to project power, military superiority, and capability around the world. Key identifiers include the employment of highly accomplished and intelligent scientists, engineers, mathematicians, and aerospace experts. This identity is reinforced by Jim Webb, the then NASA's top administrator, when he comments to Al Harrison, we can't justify a space program that doesn't put anything in space. NASA itself is a contender in a two-person race, as Al Harrison puts it, and characterized as a high-tech collection of problem solvers and doers, even as subcultures and social norms highlight division and dysfunction within it. Yet there is also demonstration of what North House refers to as internalized moral perspective and balanced processing in the characters of Al Harrison, Katherine Johnson, Alan Shepard, and even later in Vivian Mitchell. This is salient given the racial and societal tensions of the time. In short, NASA is driven by science and political goals intent on leading the world in successful human spaceflight. We'll now shift to address NASA's various cultural dimensions. The power distance index as defined by Hofstede suggests that a society's level of inequality is endorsed by the followers as much as by the leaders. At NASA, that culture can be described as a large power distance society based on the level of inequality at the time of the film Hidden Figures. Al Harrison, as head of the Space Task Group at Langley, had a reputation of not wanting to be disturbed or questioned in his leadership. What he asked for was to be done or his subordinates could look for another job. In addition, women held lesser positions and were required to adhere to a strict dress code. The women, known as calculators, were provided jobs daily, many of which were beneath their education and skills. They were not allowed to take credit for their work, as Catherine is told repeatedly by Paul Stafford to remove her name from reports that contain her calculations. It is also accepted at this time at NASA that power is a basic fact of society 
racially. The members of the West Group accept the racial and gender inequality in the workplace as Catherine is seen running across campus to use the assigned colored restrooms. Dorothy does the work of a supervisor without the title or pay, and Mary must wait to become an engineer while working beneath her education in the West Group. These women accept that power is not theirs at this time by not making waves and following orders. Rebecca will now speak on individualism versus collectivism. Hofstein defined the cultural dimension of individualism versus collectivism as the needs or goals of the individual versus the needs or goals of the group. When applying these ideals to the structure of NASA and the characters portrayed in the film, there are several examples that jump out. As an organization, NASA falls within the collectivism category. The needs of the organization and the success of the mission took priority over individuals. In this film, the focus was on race and gender of the individuals. Specific characters in the film were also portrayed within the two classifications. Al Harrison was the space task supervisor whose role was cast as breaking the social barrier in order to achieve the mission and send a man into space. The lead engineer, Paul Stafford, was depicted as an individualist who resisted change and tried to maintain the social segregation, specifically towards Catherine. Next, we'll examine the cultural dimension of uncertainty avoidance. Uncertainty avoidance, as forwarded by Hofstede, examines the way cultures use rules, structures, and laws to make things more predictable and less uncertain. These aspects are evident in the interplay of the racism and gender inequities of the 1960s NASA. Organizations with high or strong UA indices tend to see different as dangerous and unsettling to the status quo. Threats like those pitting the race to space between the United States and Russia must be met head on, and the need for strict adherence to structures are all intent in maintaining things as they are. Yet Hidden Figures itself demonstrates a kind of indictment of such structures toward a characterization that is more comfortable with uncertainty. Thank you for that information on uncertainty avoidance. Hostage's cultural dimension of masculinity versus femininity was a very present dichotomy for this organization. According to Hofstede's index, this organization could be considered high in masculinity and low to moderately low in femininity. Much of the masculine representation in this organization focused on nature, facts, and logic. The feminine representation was a balance of nature and nurture, as seen by the child rearing and upkeep of homes in addition to maintaining their jobs at NASA. As NASA begins to feel the pressure of the space race, the distance between the masculine and feminine index scores shrinks as the mission focus shifts from individualism to collectivism as discussed earlier by Rebecca. Now we move into organizational change. Organizational change for NASA and more specifically the space task group started as failure. NASA was significantly behind the Soviet Union in the space race, and the space task group was unable to meet the present demands to get an aircraft into space due to lacking analytical geometry expertise. Catherine was added to the space task group as the change agent, but it was not without pushback because of strong uncertainty avoidance, as Dave discussed previously. Once the members of the space task group acknowledged Catherine's genius and expertise, provided her with appropriate clearances and real-time information, the organization moved closer to results. Ultimately, the change was a success, and the Friendship 7 orbited the Earth. Next, Christine will discuss organizational politics. Organizational politics can be both positive and negative. Negatively, Duprin suggests is gaining power without merit, such as only white men holding positions of power at NASA in hidden figures, or Paul Stafford taking credit for Catherine's calculations. Positive organizational politics, he states, would be capitalized on talent to achieve organizational objectives, such as Al Harrison and Carl Zelensky using the math and science skills of the West Group to achieve the objective of reaching space. At NASA, this, an example of dysfunctional politics included conflicts of interest and political motives. An example of a conflict of interest in NASA's goal is Paul Stafford's resistance to change as he resents his work being double-checked, questions Catherine's abilities as a mathematician, and takes steps to maintain a social norm by placing a separate coffee pot for Catherine to use. Political motives to reach space before the Russians led to changes, such as removing bathrooms labeled by race, not because it was the right thing to do, but because Harrison felt pressure to get astronauts into space. Jim Webb says to him, Russians have a spy satellite lapping our planet, taking pictures of God knows what. The president is demanding an immediate response. Not all politics at NASA are negative. Organizational performance and career advancement moved in the right direction. Multiple units of the department at NASA 
worked together for a common goal, sending a man into space and bringing him home safely. In the area of career advancement, the women of the rest group supported one another. As Dorothy states, any upward movement is a movement for us all. Catherine is eventually recognized for her skills as John Glenn personally asked her to calculate his landing coordinates. Dorothy became supervisor of the new IBM computer group, and Mary was permitted to take courses at an all-white school so that she could become an engineer. Next is communication practice. The arrow approach seemed to be the primary means of communication throughout the majority of hidden figures. There were multiple echoes of one-way communication where the person in charge delegated expectations to the workers. I just follow the rules around here and I expect everyone else to do the same. That is just the way things are. Staying in your place and doing your job is an expectation regardless of obstacles or suggestions. Arrow management allowed those in charge to avoid anything that would jeopardize their position. There were examples of circuit management in the movie as well. Mr. Zelensky, even though he was a superior to Mary, treated her as an equal when it came to problem solving. Their discussion sparked a fire that motivated her into taking steps to become an engineer. His questions allowed her to use critical thinking skills that assisted with NASA's issues as well as her own. Circuit managers focused on relationships over content and understanding over compliance. A person with engineer's mind should be an engineer. We are living the impossible. And then there is the dance. Al Harrison was not only the main figure in this movie displaying the arrow approach to communication, but he also was a primary example of implementing the dance approach. He gave stern directives when needed, but he also gave out small pieces of advice that helped the individual as well as the company. Your job is to find the genius among those geniuses. If we don't get to the peak together, we don't get there at all. There were multiple biblical references that could have been parallel to hidden figures. The humbled were exalted. Those that were in charge expected things to stay the same. God placed those viewed by man as less than in places of honor. The book of Judges contained multiple connections to include the story of Deborah and Barak in chapter 4. They could only achieve the goal when they worked together. The end of Judges addressed the thoughts of most, if not all, of the characters of the movie. Judges chapter 21 verse 25 states, everyone did what was right in their own eyes. This has been Team David's organizational analysis of the film Hidden Figures. Thank you.